Good evening. You're listening to Adrenaline Motorsports. I'm Fred Blanchard, your host. And we were talking to Dom Prieto, our in-studio guest. That, uh, yeah, tell us a little bit about the reunion and who's going to show up and what you've heard about it. Uh, just uh, Well, uh, the original reunion, the original Cackle Fest had nine cars in it, one of which was the Hustler 1. Now there's 105 of them. And they're all going to show up. <laughs> Guys like uh, Jerry Ruth and uh, uh, Bucky Austin and... Uh, uh, well, you can't yeah. leave out Wayne King. He, Wayne he, King will be there with bells on. Uh, <laughs> uh, Tommy Hanna and uh, 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 Mike Cool and, and uh, Carl Olson. Uh, and then it's endless. Herm Peterson. Uh, guys coming out of the woodwork with these cars. And... The lion's share of these cars are owned by the people that participated in them to begin with. Like the weekly, the Frantic Four, Norm Weekly will be there. Right. Uh, Wayne King will have his own car there. Uh, I was involved with the Cannon car, so it's going to be there. Uh, and like I say, most of the cars are a a uh, a responsibility of a person who either was a crew, a participant, a hanger around, or an actual owner slash driver. Uh, Waterman, uh, uh, the Hampshire brothers redid the Waterman and Hampshire car, and uh, Super Sid will be there, and both the Hampshire brothers will be there. That's uh, an interesting. It's, it's that kind of a of a gathering, and all of these people. Uh, were there in the 60s when we were doing this racing. Well, I got to tell you, I, uh, the Hampshire car, uh, the one that was the S&H Green Stamp car, uh, there was a short period in my life when I did actually own the car. Didn't do anything with it, by the way, but uh-huh. uh, I did own that car for a very short period of time, took it to Kent Fuller. He did a little bit of work on it for me, and I spent a little few, few dollars on that, and then uh, it left my hands, and evolved and now it's uh been totally redone and yep. uh it is out there and there was a history on on that car on the internet and uh the only thing it said of my ownership was uh, i had it but didn't do anything with it so yeah. <laughs> well you know if any of the people who are listening either one of them would like to uh find out what this cackle fest is all about you can go to a website called cacklefest.com and there are on that that site just about every car that has been redone for uh, nostalgia purposes. Wow! And there's in many cases there's a, a thorough history of the car and the team, and uh, uh, some more elaborate than others. Who who are the historians on gathering this all this data back from the, back when really? Uh, the gentleman's name that actually does the assembly work is uh, Don Ewald. Okay, he was a dragster driver from the '60s, and uh, one of your resident ne'er do wells, <laughs> and, and he's now located in Oregon, and he doesn't have anything else to do because there isn't anything to do in Oregon, you know, <laughs> and so so he puts this. This show, this uh, this website together, and the rest of us contribute to it. We send him a pile of stuff, some words and some pictures, and it ends up looking really nice on the on the uh, uh, site itself. It's, well, n- now that uh, you've brought that up, I guess I'm going to have to dig up some old history on. Uh, uh, what we did not run in NHRA it was AHRA back in the day, and if uh-huh. I can find anything on that, uh, I'll let you tell some lies about that time. I'll be <laughs> glad to. I was there when you ran that thing and turned it, and the uh, Mulligan and them turned that car over uh, and allowed you to back into the yeah, wind. Yeah, thanks a lot to like you, that. you and Jerry, you and Jerry <laughs> Johansson. <laughs> You and Jerry Johansson, I no credit, no no slack with the, for the. No, I the, I did the story on that car for the magazine, so I know that you uh, you guys earned the slot. It's just unfortunate <laughs> that they did 
did something silly and weren't able to make the last round. So. Well, it was the day of really hardcore racing. Nobody was really friendly other than a select uh, bunch of guys, you know, and uh, they all, uh, but come race day, we're, we're all competitors, and that was pretty much it. And and what too much, uh, wasn't too much of the, the socializing back in those days as it is today, of course. And because of you, the socializing has expanded in uh uh, for the March meet, uh, you've been uh, very gracious in opening up your facility to allow uh, a lot of the, the never wases and a lot of the has beens to show up. <laughs> and <over> Louis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can't leave out Louis Grignetti. In fact, he just called last week and he's uh, uh-huh. wanting to know what was happening as usual. And let's do this and we want to, we, we need to do this and do that. But yeah. Anyway. But he, he comes with his hands in his pocket and never takes them out. Right? That's true. That's true. <laughs> but again, I can't uh, thank you enough for having your open house and uh, your, your, uh, uh, what do we call that? It, it was the, well, it's the, uh, it's the, uh, March meet 4040 hindsight, uh, taco <laughs> party and drag fest. There you go. There you go. <laughs> well, I got to tell you that you bring them out of the woodwork. I've, uh, had the, the privilege of seeing Roland Leong there and Tommy Ivo and, uh, yeah. and, uh, a bunch of guys that, uh, they we're back there during the day, and uh, they actually talk to each other. So <laughs> I guess all that's behind us. Huh? Either that or their memory's failing. <laughs> <laughs> and I think oh, uh, God, that I their failing think. memory is uh, is contributory. Yeah, that's true. Uh, Don, why don't you talk to us a little bit about the event itself? Well, the, the, as you know, uh, there is a... Uh, a class of car out there called the Nostalgia Drag Racer uh, that started, I believe, uh, in 1982 or so, where some guys got together and ran their old cars up at Fremont. And that started Nostalgia Drag Racing. Guys wanted to run the old cars, and there was no real competition as such. It was just come up and run and have a good time. Well, that kind of matriculated into what is now known as the Heritage Series. And that's six races across the country for cars that look similar to the early cars like mine. And early funny cars that have the bodies from the 60s and 70s that uh, actually look like real cars instead of... uh, uh, well, aerodynamic the, envelopes, you know. Yeah, well, they evolved from what they call the factory experimentals. Right. And then uh, they started making, uh, we used to call them the Plastic Fantastics, and they were began to become fiberglass cars at that point. And yeah. Then, well, the, uh, uh, the, the funny car derived the name from the, uh, the original factory experimentals where they moved the rear end forward, and the, and the car looked funny. And that's how it got its name. And then that particular brand of racer uh, got more and more sophisticated to the point to where it's almost as fast as the dragsters. Not quite, but almost. Well, they're pretty impressive, and uh, there's some rumors of of the quantity of cars that are coming. There apparently are 40 cars, 40 of these uh, 70s funny cars, uh, that are going to be competing for, uh, I think, 16 slots. Wow. Uh, qualifying. And uh, there's 18 uh, front engine dragsters that are coming that are going to compete for 16 spots as well. Wow. And uh, it ought to be one hell of a show. Uh, if, you, if you're not into walking around in the pits and looking at us old buzzards playing with our... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we won't go uh, that our far. Our old race cars. <laughs> uh, and you want to see some real action, uh, you can climb up in the stands and watch these guys uh, go out and blow up their parts and and uh, uh, really make some fire and go fast. They go. They run in the five-second bracket and over 250 miles an hour. With Which was not done in the day we were not running them. Not even close. And they've, mean, they've limited the cars with the components. Are ten allowed. In, ten-inch tire is the big limiting factor, but it seems not to be the, such a severe limitation at this point because <laughs> well, they're going 50 miles an hour faster than most of us went with but, these same the cars. Co- the components themselves have evolved, as you know. I mean, everything that you put on them are highly sophisticated parts today, and... 
Yes. And uh, they, but yeah. they resemble what we ran. Like <laughs> yeah, right. The, the 671 superchargers that we ran came off of a D- GMC truck, right? <laughs> yes. These 671s cost 50 grand. <laughs> <laughs> and they got Teflon bushings and buttons yeah. and stuff in them, and uh, they last two runs. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, it, that That's the phenomenal part about it. Yeah, we're we're saving money because we took <laughs> one, one Magneto away from you, and you were limited to a small fuel pump. Yeah, right. Yeah, uh-huh. and you can weld with the Magneto. <laughs> <laughs> it puts on so much power. Yeah. Matter of fact, one of the guys uh, uh, that went to the drag races went 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 to the starting line to shoot some pictures, and this guy fired up in one of those cars with the big magnetos, and it made his watch and his camera quit. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.